All right. Uh, welcome to the Young Turks. Jane Huger, Michael Schur at America's Future Now with a very appropriate guest, the person who's the it, director of Campaign for America's Future, the who's putting together yeah. the conference. In <laughs> whom America's Future's hands rest. America's <laughs> Future's Now. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. And not even that so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, obviously, as we just explained, you're putting together a conference. Uh, give us a little uh, roundup so far. What's your, what's your thoughts? Is it going awesome? Uh, and what was your objectives, and do you think you're meeting that? Yeah, I think uh, you know the, this is a time for progressives to come together and take stock of where mm -hmm. we are and right. get a sense of where we're headed. And I think you had a uh, you have a progressive community that's been in meshed in fierce battles around reform since Obama's been elected. Uh, much of it uh, discouraged, dis disappointed, uh, and at the same time aware that real advances have been made. So there's this kind of Co internal conflict that people have as well as uh, or conflict in organizations. So this was a chance to come and talk about how we think about that, etc. And our view of this was we want to take people from dismay and uh, fatigue and kind of the, the, the fallout of, of the struggles and the compromises and the reverses to understanding the strength of what's been done and the weaknesses and to be re-energized and get ready for a bigger battle but going let, forward. And, but let me ask you something, Bob. I mean, if you had, uh, if back when the conference was called Take America Back, if Take, back, take America, back America. I'm sorry, yeah. take back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if I had told you, hey, you know what, congratulations, you took it back, right, in 08, and then, but funny enough, you're going to have a conference in 2010 and you're going to talk about how dismayed everyone is. Uh, would you have been, I mean, would you have been surprised? Maybe not. Uh, or would you have thought, like, oh, that sucks. I mean, we took it back no, and we're still dismayed. I, I, I don't think we were never, we never re thought we had a progressive majority in both houses of Congress as opposed to a Democratic majority. Um, right. And, and actually, the irony for me is President Obama was bolder than I expected him to be. We talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. I expected him to be much a much more moderate and cautious figure, something like Clinton. Well, can you be and specific about that, actually? Because he strikes me as very moderate and very cautious, especially the latter. Well, we're not doing school uniforms and TV monitors. And, right. You know, we're doing health care, the biggest health care reform since Medicare. We're doing the biggest recovery plan ever. We're doing the biggest uh, financial reform since the 30s. We're doing the biggest energy reform ever. Right. So he put big things that the country has to deal with on the table. Now, I think in his conception, yeah. he's very uh, cautious. I mean, I so in measured. Execution, yeah. He's much more timid than I would like. But the the... The assertion, the boldness of putting those things on the agenda surprised me. I yeah. thought we'd, he would be much more cautious at that level, too. Uh, but isn't that, that a, a marketing job more than anything else? Because the agenda seems so large, but then the actual change delivered, in my estimation, is so little that he gets the credit for being bold without actually being bold? No, I think that's, un I think that's too harsh. I mean, uh -huh. I, the, the recovery plan, he put, I think, what was the limit of the politically possible, you know, almost a trillion dollars. You couldn't get over a trillion because people's minds would have collapsed. Right. It was then weakened in the Senate with the, blue, the, the conservative Democrats and the Republicans. Right. They put in the tax cuts. They took out the spending and the investment stuff. Uh, and it was made smaller. Uh, and that's when we first saw that we would have liked a president who would fight a lot harder and, right. Uh, right. you know, be tougher in, in kind of rallying the country. But what he put out was a serious plan. I have right. no beef with the stimulus plan. That that you know, that's politics. You don't get everything you want. He gave it a shot. I got no problems with that at all. It's the ensuing stuff that I that, that we've got issues with. But is that one of the themes of the I mean, either planned or unplanned, the one of the themes of the conference is Obama doing enough, are Democrats doing enough? No, I think the theme was. Uh, on the one hand we've had the greatest flurry of reform since the sixties and on the other hand it is insufficient. It is insufficient to what we need as a country. And, is in, and, it, and it's, it violates our expectations. We want more, and we should want more, and we should be pushing independently for more. And the way to respond to that is to get re-engaged in this battle, right, and to build an independent movement with a moral voice. The that, notion that we've allowed the, the ersatz uh, right, the Tea Party, to capture a populist voice in this debate is really uh, you know, a mistake, and it's our mistake. And uh, we've got to be much more independent and much stronger at pushing the administration uh, and demanding what the country needs in, in, as we try to build a new economy out of the ruins of this last one. It seems like you know, when you say it's a mistake, um, what we, I'm just 
thinking about what you were just saying about the Tea Party movement. It's, it's our mistake, but it's, it's sort of everybody's mistake. I mean, it's not just, it doesn't fall on the Democrats, it doesn't just fall on the progressives. Um, I feel like it falls actually on the mainstream Republicans who are allowing that co-opting to happen as well. So I, I, I think that there's a, I get a feeling that there are a lot of Democrats, a lot of progressives who, a lot of liberals, which is a word I like, who, who say that, you know, let them burn. You know, just sort of let the Tea Party go crazy and destroy that party, which in some places it seems that they're doing. Yeah, um, okay. you know, so. Whereas I'm concerned that they're moving the Overton window. You know, I'm using that phrase too much lately, but uh, that they're moving us further down the spectrum because now the new spectrum is Obama, who I think is center right. Is the Maoist it's a, it's kind of the spectrum, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and the Tea uh, Party folks, who I, th some of whom I think are mental, uh, are considered the almost. Yeah, I mean, I the, the White Citizens right Council of the fifties and sixties. Right. So, so where do you fall on that? I mean, do you think the Tea Party does more damage to us or to the Republicans? I think it does political damage to the Republicans, and I think that it's had this uh, magnetic force that you're, you're talking about, that, that they have been able to direct. It's stunning to me that, you know, 16 months after driving this economy off a cliff and driving us into the war in Iraq, that the, the Republican right, both the Tea Parties and the, the, uh, the established candidates, are trying to come back in power with the same ideas, the same policies, the same position, uh, and it has energy. And the ener they've given it the energy. Yeah. Um, well, and, uh, and that, uh, I think, you know, when, uh, when I think a lot of progressives, including ourselves, I mean, I'm not uh, pointing fingers at others only, got enmeshed in trying to pass health care and financial reform and energy. And we, and, you know, we were w pushing the White House a little bit and working with the White House and mobilizing people in legislative mm -hmm. battles. And meanwhile, the war of ideas. They're doing socialism, you know, et cetera, yeah. and reviving their own ideas. And no one is teaching Americans. No one's taking this moment to say to Americans, listen, we, tr they, we tried their way. It drove us off the cliff. We can't afford to go back there. And they haven't changed a whit. We have to engage that battle. Big well, th that goes to the heart of this convention and, and the whole moment in time, right? And we're talking to Bob Borsage. He's one of the directors of Campaign for America's Future. They're putting together this uh, conference. Because, you know, we, how do we get progressives excited, uh, when, uh, their leader, uh, Obama is not being progressive, if you ask me. And, and I say that within the context of what you said, because l let's talk about the, the biggest issue here, uh, today, currently in the news is, of course, the oil spill, right? And here's a guy that should right now be taking this opportunity to say, yep. look, here's where you need government, right? We needed, we failed because we, we should have protected the taxpayer, we should have protected our citizens, and we shouldn't let this happen again. But he doesn't, one, I don't think he's sufficiently saying that. Two, he's not in a position to say it because he had just come out and saying, I love offshore oil drilling. So how do we, to come back and to the he, question, and how with do we... Katrina, there was a dress rehearsal for this. It's not exactly the same, but it's the kind, it's the same, it's the same idea of the federal government reacting to something that is happening in, and and making a case for the federal government having that role. So how do we get progressives excited when their leader is not really being progressive? I think that's less the problem mm -hmm. than the fact that it wasn't just Obama that cut the deal on offshore oil drilling. It was most of the environmental community was with mm -hmm. that deal. So it wasn't just Obama who was tongue tied. It was environmentalists who were tongue tied. The leading mm -hmm. environmentalists with the biggest megaphones. You know, couldn't say stop offshore drilling. They just got to deal right. for it to be part of the bill, and that's the mistake. We're, you know, if you go back to when Republicans controlled everything, it was a progressive movement that got excited, and and, and in many ways taught Democrats to fight. Uh, I mean, I think the blogosphere played a huge role in yeah. that. I think it, in, you know, it created movements. It, it, with uh, Ned Lamont, it gave Democrats their voice on the war in Iraq, which they never would have gotten to without that challenge. Uh, and it transformed how they were campaigning to help them take back the Congress. We excited them. And we excited a young senator to run for press to think he might win the presidency and run because of this movement and this energy and this agenda and message we built, we collectively. Uh, so I think it's time for us to go back to that role, right? I mean, we've got to go, we've got to get excited ourselves and move independently and, and Dra drag this debate back to where it needs to be. But then and let that me means the president has to be 
we have to be independent of him, and we've got to be—he's got to be a target and somebody we're pushing. Exactly. I mean, that—that that naturally leads to that question. In order for us to do that, uh, we got to target the president because you got to let the country know he's—he's—he's he's, he's not being progressive. If they think progressivism is Obama, then progressivism is in a lot of trouble. Okay, so. And the problem is when you go to Democrats and say, let's fight Obama, that's a, boy, is that an uphill battle. I mean, I take a lot of heat for it. I remember when uh, he did the original offshore drilling uh, plan, and, uh, and I came out and said, it's a terrible idea. And we got, even in the blogosphere, I took a tremendous right. amount of heat for that. Right. And, and, and so how do you get people excited to take on, it's easy to take on Bush and get right. people excited no, for that. Question. It's a harder task. And on the other hand, I think people are getting more and more sober about both the the, the achievements we've had and the limits, mm -hmm. and they're more and more ready. I think that's what you've seen in this conference. So, you know, Phaedra Ellis Lampkins, the head of Green for All. Green for All worked arm and glove with the administration. You know, they, Dan Jones was in the White House. They were putting right. the program Until together. he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, they were putting the program together. Until he met the underside of a bus. Right, and, yeah. And... Uh, but yesterday, she says the president's response on uh, on uh, the Gulf is atrocious and mm -hmm. and criticizes him straight up and calls for an end to offshore drilling. And I think you'll see you see more and more groups getting to the point where they understand they got to be an outside force again, pushing yeah. and laying out a moral voice. Deepak Bergava, who built the big coal, helped us build a big coalition on health care and built a big coalition on immigration reform. Same thing, right? Uh, yeah. We've got to be an independent movement with a moral voice. I think it's incredibly important, uh, and I and I don't I do think it's sort of we tried it the other way. <laughs> We're yeah, yeah. learning, right? It's yeah. And and it is about what you what you led with in a way, which is the politically possible. It's sort of what Jenk and I uh, disagree on sometimes. Isn't appreciate that 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 liberals, progressives, they don't appreciate what the difference between what they really want and what is politically po possible and and they want to change both at the same time which isn't always uh, always doable but I, I think an appreciation for the politically politically possible is is such an important asset for for people to uh, have. but that's the conflict that you know it is the conflict I um, here we go no no and that's why that's this conference I think captures the essence of that debate yeah I think that's why it's so important right because uh, I think that it's enormously important for us to stop compromising uh, endlessly uh, to, in order to try to find the politically possible. We're so ready to find the quote-unquote politically possible that we don't actually know what's possible politically because we don't even try. We don't try for the change. But So that's the debate that keeps going back and forth here. Yeah. So let me ask a, a question in that regard. Do you sense here at the conference with all these progressives here whether that is tilted to one side or another, or are we just right in the middle there at this point? Is no, I think it's moving. I think we're moving to progressives being much more assertive about their need to build once more independently and to, to uh, push Democrats. Uh, I think the, uh, the challenge to Blanche Lincoln, uh, that labor and move on and others joined in, uh, is the beginning. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope they um, go to their house in 2012 and, and 2014. Uh, I, think, uh, I think the... Uh, the lesson from uh, health care and, and energy and financial reform is we've got to lay out uh, the right position. We've got to build a movement that demands it. We've got to do demonstrations that push it. We have to challenge the limits of the president's agenda if they're too small. Yeah. And we don't have to be in the interstices of the negotiation. We do a better job when we're on the outside pushing than if we're, you know, in the middle of the cutting of the deals, et cetera. Right. Is one a question on specifics. Uh, financial reform is a topic I care deeply about. We talk about it all the time. Obviously, it's kind of being resolved now. Um, I think you know my thoughts on it. I think it's a joke. Uh, am I? <laughs> it's hard to say I'm not overstating it, right? Because <laughs> I call it a joke. But <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see how I should put it. Uh, all right, uh, are we going to get anything out of it, or is does it seem uh, fruitless? Uh, you know, a, a lot of theater. Well, you're definitely going to get something out of it. I, the, the Consumer Financial Protection Agency is a, will be a big deal for people. Uh, mm -hmm. It will it will create rules that will make consumers uh, that will help protect them. Uh, and you know, the kind of the basis of the bill is to say to regulators, go regulate. Mm -hmm. 
that'll work for a while because everybody's on guard now that, <laughs> oh my God, we can't do that again. But the big, uh, there's no question, the big questions, are we breaking up the banks or are we, are we going to protect them as too big to fail? Um, those, uh, you know, the bill doesn't reach and, uh, and that's, you know, that's got to be done. That's got to. That fight's going to continue. And how, continue to, uh, how then does that fight, fight continue? I mean, if once oh, it's I done think. and they walk away, I mean, you yeah, know, well, look at right. look at the look at what happened in this. This bill is much stronger than anybody expected, as yeah. weak as it is. It, uh, also, it's really strong. they expected something weaker than oh, this. Oh, absolutely. And the Senate, wow. the, the Senate bill, <laughs> came out stronger than the House bill, which no one expected. Why yeah. did that happen? That happened because of well, Lehman Brothers and the bankruptcy petition and the scandals around that. It happened because of the Goldman Sachs investigations and hearings and the scandals around that. It happened around the demonstrations and the sudden realization in the Congress, oh, my God, people are really <laughs> furious at these big banks. It also happened because Chris Dodd didn't need to be careful anymore. I mean, there's... I do. I think that it has a lot to do with it. That realization that most people were screaming about for a long time didn't strike the Congress in large numbers until the end of last year. And when they got that, suddenly progressives in the Congress who had their own, and progressives on the outside, had their own agenda, you know, the Simon Johnson, break up the banks, Kaufman arguing for that inside, uh, the, the Lincoln thing, which came out of nowhere, partly because of the, the uh, challenge of to her. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they're going to um, get rid of that. Well, but all I'm saying is the thing got uh, I don't tougher. Know that that. The thing got tougher because of scandal, anger, and politicians protecting themselves. In December, if this, if the audit the Fed stays in, we get on a website every deal the Fed made with every private financial institution, and with enough, with a small amount of research, what we're going to discover is that they paid more than top dollar for. Real garbage. That's, That's a great point, you know, because I was going to say that would be a big scandal. That, I was going to say the only thing I got out of the financial reform bill, if it stays roughly as it is, with the expectation that uh, derivatives part uh, from Lincoln will get removed, uh, but we will see. If it doesn't, then I'll come back and say that was a good part. Uh, is Franken changing the ratings agencies? That that was really important. But you're right, audit of the Fed is very very important, and it's always good to rem remember that. It's something. It's something. It's. Not nearly enough, but uh, I'll skip my normal diatribe on that. So, uh, obviously, we had to ask you about what happened this morning. It's, you know, Nancy Pelosi comes to speak, and then we have two different protests, Code Pink, but all they did was a banner, and that they were not disruptive at right. all. Right. As soon as there was a disruption, people thought it was Code Pink. I thought it was Code Pink, right? Especially because their banner popped up right away, right? right. right? But it turns out it's not. It's people who were uh, moved by the Community Act, but they were so loud, I didn't know which side of the Community Act they were on. Uh, and they uh, disrupt Pelosi's speech for the entirety of the speech. You know, I, everybody agrees. It's a lose-lose situation. How do you handle that? You know, there's there were so many of them, they wouldn't be quiet, and you can't. It, half of them were uh, for the people at home that don't know were in wheelchairs. Right. You know, how do you handle a situation like that? Well, the, the, you know, we were caught totally off guard. I have to admit, and uh, and uh, so that that is what it is. And I've never, we've had lots of people kind of protest a speaker. We had Hillary uh, heckled here, etc. I've never seen a group uh, just sustain it for 20 minutes. I thought that was offensive beyond belief. I mean, I, you right. made your point. Yeah. Why in the world would you just t continue the process? And then to find out that she's actually an ally of theirs in the struggle they're about, mm -hmm. right, but can't get a majority in the Congress to do it because it's very expensive, is even more perverse. I mean, you just think, holy God, what, what is in their heads? But the person who was very clear-minded in this uh, was Nancy Pelosi, who said, I don't believe in removing them. I'm not leaving. I'm going to give my speech and, and exhibited a spine of steel. I was incredibly impressed with her. Uh, there's no question that the person who came out the biggest winner there was uh, Pelosi because uh, I didn't agree with a lot of what she was saying in the speech. In the end, I was giving her a standing ovation because yeah, you had to really respect her fight and her you know her grip. strength yep. of character to That's how she got there in a way. I mean, yep. <laughs> right. And it was a it was a great moment. And honestly, when Roger came up and raised her hand. That was like a very nice moment. That was a great moment, and and you felt like she did it, you yeah. know. Yeah. 
And and I think, of course, the big losers out of that are the people protesting because you just turned every natural ally in the country against you. I mean, you couldn't have done a more counterproductive protest. Do you have any idea who put that together? Because I tried. It's to a find group called Adapt. It's a it's a uh, it's sort of the hit team of the disabled community, uh, uh-huh. and they're apparently uh, infamous for this kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, and um, was the organizer even in the room? Because I tried to find them and couldn't. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because it seemed like you couldn't even talk to anybody. You know, they they, they were not they were not communicating. They, they were not engaging, engaging at all. They no. were in autopilot. And right. They were not going to stop, and they were not going to engage. And um, does that? I mean, look, I'm not a guy who minds burning bridges, and I, I, you got to you know you got to engage in a fight when it's the right time. But there's bounds of reason, and this is way beyond the bounds of reason. Have they burned their bridges in, you know, with every conceivable well, I think that, yeah. democratic sure, if and any, progressive? If anybody, uh, you know, they came here. We didn't know they were coming as a group. Uh-huh. They didn't. We didn't see the T-shirts. Yeah. Us, you know, right. So they were organized in the room. Uh, so they're pretty adept at this. Right. Uh, adept at this. Yeah. <laughs> but if, uh, if people knew they were coming, they'll, I mean, they're going to find it harder and harder. And they'll find yeah. perceptions that are not as uh, generous as ours was this week. Right. Yeah, because you guys didn't remove them, and, right. and there will come a day, you know, yeah. and it's terrible. I mean, and to put their own people on the line like that, some, some I believe some of them had Down syndrome. So you're going to put them in the line of fire, you know, by doing these tactics on purpose. It's really, it's repulsive. Yeah. So, uh, but the conference has been very interesting. Obviously, that was a very interesting moment. Uh, but the but, debate you know, we, is we, what we, engages it, me. One of the, the one of the things I've been saying to people is Pelosi's the most progressive and the strongest speaker we've had in our country's history. I mean, I think we've had conservative speakers yeah. that have been pretty strong, but we've never had a speaker like this. Um, she's the reason we have the comprehensive health care bill, as opposed to a, a, a minor, an even small. I know you don't. But, uh, I mean, the one that didn't cover 30 million more people. Uh, right. And, uh, and, and it's, it's really record, quite extraordinary. We were, I'm sorry. And, just, and I, well, I just think the session this morning showed people why. It yeah. Showed right. Who she was and right. why she's that kind of leader. Right. Just to be clear, I, I think Pelosi is better than the Senate, obviously. <laughs> right. Yeah. Obviously. So. I'm not, I'm not like, ah, go after all of them. They're all horrible. I get that there's a certain percentage, and I get that there's a spectrum, and she's closer to our side than the, certainly the senators are. Yeah, I mean, if you think of the votes they've taken, that she had them take, mm-hmm. you know, $150 billion jobs bill in December goes mm-hmm. nowhere in the well. Senate. I mean, this would be a much better economy if we could have had the Senate mirror what they came out of the House with. Unquestionably. All right, Bob Borsage from Campaign for America's Pleasure. Future. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good to really see you. appreciate it.